I'm so glad to be here. Like I said, we could be anywhere else. You know, we, we're running this race, and what most people in the world don't realize is they think we're just a bunch of crazy people who got the Jesus thing going. This is the hardest thing. Living for the Lord is the hardest thing in the world to do. Amen. Yes. Amen. It's the hardest thing in the world to do. And people can say, oh, it's so simple. Y'all make it look so easy. Well, why don't you try, try to live for Jesus? Try to get in the faith and really fight to keep this faith. It's a fight, but we march on. Amen. It don't matter what happens, what comes our way. We march on. Because Jesus Christ, the hope of glory, is in us. Amen. It don't matter what happens to us today. Tomorrow you could lose that job that you think is just awesome and that you'll never lose. Well, what are you going to do then? <laughs> Turn to Jesus. Amen. You've got to be able to say, I bless your name, Lord. I praise your name. Even when you're going through those times. I've been going through some pretty rough times here lately. Some things will happen in your life you never think you'll be tested on. But you know why the Lord's doing it? To bring you closer to Him. When you feel like you're being squeezed, remember whose hand you're in. You're in God's hand. You're in His hand. And He's squeezing you. He's taking out the things in your life that are in the way. If you never experience any squeezing, well, you need to reevaluate your faith a little bit. You need to get make sure you're in this fight cuz like I said it is a fight. Amen. 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 Would you turn in your Bibles with me tonight to Proverbs chapter 8? I preached a message at LSU last week, the college uh, we were uh, we were gifted with the opportunity to be able to go in there every uh, second Thursday, I believe, of the month. Uh, youth group at the Bible College at the ministry at Jimmy Swaggart Ministries at Crossfire. We're, uh, we have a practicum, a student ministry that allows us to go in and share the gospel at LSU. A big college like that, amen. And I was able to preach this message a little bit and it's been rolling over in my heart uh, and in my soul and I feel like this is a message that every single believer needs to, to hear and it is experiencing God in His righteousness. How many of you know that God only speaks in righteousness and He only works in truth? If you didn't know that, we're, I'm about to prove it to you tonight in the Word of God. Everybody has a Bible. Well, if you don't, you know, that's all right. You came naked to church. I'm not bashing anybody, condemning anybody. But everybody reads their Bible, I hope, and you know that this Bible is the Word of God. Does everybody believe that this Bible is the Word of God? Your Bible is the words of God. Does everybody believe that their Bible contains the words of God? Everybody does? Okay, then we can be on a good same page tonight. Uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verses 6 through 8. <clears throat> Solomon writes here and says, Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words, and this is the key verse we're going to be focusing on tonight, and this is God speaking through Solomon. He's saying this about himself, the Lord. This is about God. Verse 8, All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. All God's words are in righteousness. And before we continue any, before we look into this uh, great truth tonight, I just ask that you pray with me. Yes. Oh Lord, we come before you tonight, Father, Heavenly Father. We praise your great name. We give you the honor and the glory that's due to you, God. Thank you for saving us out of the world, Lord. Thank you for crucifying us with you, God. Lord, we know that we're fleshly and carnal and we were sold under sin, Lord, but you crucified us and buried us and resurrected us with you, Lord, and we thank you for that and thank you for everything that we can now experience because of that, Lord. Thank you for the many benefits, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity tonight that you've given me. Lord, I ask that all the needs that were prayed for earlier, all the healing, Lord, all the touches that were, men that were mentioned earlier, Lord, that you would just meet those needs in the name of Jesus. And Lord, that I would be sensitive to the Spirit tonight, to your Spirit, Lord, and the true teacher, the Holy Spirit, would come tonight, Lord. 
I ask you to anoint me to minister, Lord, that it would be all you and anoint the people to hear, Lord, and let your presence stay in this place, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Proverbs chapter 8. We're going to read verse 8 one more time if thought that's all right. And this is the Lord speaking about Himself. It says, All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. Somebody say all the words. All the words. Some of the words. No, not some of the words. All of my words. The words of God, like previously said, are found in the Bible. And you cannot properly understand the words of God if you can't understand His righteousness. Because the Bible said all the words of my mouth are found in righteousness. And if you can't understand His righteousness, you can't understand the words He's speaking to you. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And he said, we need the bread of life every day. So if we're going to be able to live, Jesus also said he is the word. Psalms 138 verse 3, I believe, says that he exalted the word above his very name. So if we need to understand and receive the bread of life every day, we're going to have to understand the righteousness of God because my Bible just told me that all His words are in righteousness. So if you would, turn with me to Romans chapter 1. Say amen when you get there. We're going to see what the righteousness of God really is tonight. Romans chapter 1, going to be starting in verse 16. Paul's writing here, um, speaking of the gospel. This is a very common passage of Scripture, frequently preached on and shared. But we're going to look at it in a little different light tonight. And if you've heard it taught like this, praise the Lord. But if you haven't, I hope you're blessed. Like I said, I feel like every child of God needs to understand how His Father speaks to it. Right? Amen. We need to understand what the Lord is saying and how we're hearing it. Because if not, we could just be listening to some preacher or some voice in the back of our head be thinking it's God and it not even really be God. Amen. But the way that we know it is God, we're about to find out. Verse 16, Paul writes and says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein, wherein? The gospel. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So what did that just tell us? If every word that God speaks is in righteousness and righteousness is revealed in the gospel, that means God's only speaking through the gospel. All of His words are the gospel. And what did this verse just tell us that the gospel of Christ was? The power of God. 1 Corinthians 1.18. What is the power of God? The preaching of the cross. So in all that statement, I know that was kind of a mouthful, but the preaching of the cross is the power of God. The gospel is the power of God. And God's righteousness is revealed in His gospel. Amen. So God's righteousness is revealed in the preaching of what His Son Jesus came to do. Of what He did on Calvary. So if righteousness is revealed in that, and all God's, work, all God's words are spoken in righteousness, what does that mean? All God is saying to His church, all God is saying to the world today is what His Son Jesus did at Calvary. Amen. That's right. Can anybody disagree with that tonight? No. no, nobody can, even if they want to. Because it's in the Bible. It's in the Jesus book. It's in the Word of God. You know, uh, preachers that say, well, it, is the cross really that serious? You know, every time you get up there behind that pulpit, all you really talk about is that wooden beam. You know, what does it mean, the cross, the cross, the cross? had a person ask me the other day, what do you really mean when you say the cross? What, is that, what does that even mean? And, and, and you know, you can sit under it for years and not really get it. But I'm not talking about a wooden beam, and I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times. But I'm talking about what Jesus did there. Because everything you receive from God, Romans 8, 32 
how shall he not freely with him, he that spared not his own son, give you all things? Every single thing you receive from God, every single word, every single thing he does for you is through that finished work. Yes. And that's proved throughout the word of God. Well, we can go home now. <laughs> you know, we could go home now because we know that. But it, that, that, and people really don't get it, you know. And they can't get it because they're deceived, they're blind, because they can't understand the righteousness of God. Either they've rejected it or they truly just don't know in ignorance. But if anybody tries to tell you, you know, it, it, do we really have to preach the cross that much? I, I mean, every single service? Well, do you want to hear the words of God every service? Yes. yes. And how does the words of God get revealed to us? The preaching of the cross. Yes. So we must, yes, we must preach the cross. Now, I'm not talking about the crucifixion story of Jesus every service. And I'm not talking about... The, the foundation every service. I'm talking about whatever you're teaching, whatever you're preaching on has to tie back to what His Son did right. at Calvary. Yeah, if you're going right. to teach on the Lord's Prayer, you've got to teach on why we can pray. Why can we even pray? How does that prayer tie in right. to Calvary? How does that prayer tie in to the finished work of Christ? Amen. This ain't just something I'm up here repeating. I, I heard Brother Swaggart or I heard my dad or I heard Pastor Matt say, this ain't just something I'm repeating that I heard Paul say. This is in the Word of God. That's right. And you will experience it if you truly want to live for God. If you're looking for the answer, this is it. Jesus came and died for you. Not just to free you from hell. And not just to free you from sin. We know that. Free you from the sin nature, right? The old man. I love that right there. Not just to free you from that, but to also reign in your heart and right. life. Amen. Yes. He didn't just come to free you from sin, free you from hell. He came to truly be your Lord, Amen. your God. Yes. Not, Amen. not church on Sunday, not church on Wednesday, not that preacher that can just so eloquently speak. And you know I can't because I couldn't even say eloquently. <laughs> but not that man or not that woman in your life, not your kids, not your job. Not food, not anything. That's right. God, yes. the Lord of Lords, the same God that created everything. Yes. Isn't it funny how sometimes we just run to Him when we're in trouble? Yes. But when we're on the mountaintop, we just push everybody else off. It's all about me. Me, me, me. Brother Pride and Sister Self-Righteous. It's all about me. Who's been there? I've been there. Yes. I've been there. I'll be the first one to admit it. But He's come and died not just for those things, but to reign and rule in your life. Not just one week, not just one day a week at church, but every single day, Jesus wants you to wake up and declare, I will rejoice in your salvation. I will march on. Your mercies are new every day. Who felt like waking up and getting out of, out of bed this morning? I want to see some hands. I want, to, I want some... All right. We're going to have to talk after church now. You're going to have to teach me some secrets. Now, I got up before 7. You know, in high school, my last two years of high school, I had an off period. I didn't get up till like 9.30 every day. Now, in Bible college, I'm waking up pretty early. And that's something the Lord's having to deal with me with. But you've got to wake up every single day. And I'm not talking about right when you wake up. Some of us aren't morning people, amen. We need a couple minutes to ourselves. But I'm talking about every single day. You've got to look and bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, yes. like Paul wrote yes. in Corinthians. Every single day, you've got to reestablish your faith. You've got to check into the cross. You've got to say, Lord, I deny myself and I take up my cross. Is it that important? Yes, it is. Go a few days without it. Go a few days without making sure your faith is in the right place. You'll be failing. You'll fail. I promise. It, it, it's, not a, it's not a questionable matter. If your faith every single day isn't in the right object and you take it out of the cross, you're going to put it in law and you're going to be dominated by sin. Amen. Now that's a negative thought. Well, here's a positive one. If you do keep your faith in Christ and His finished work every single day, the Bible tells us and promises that we don't have to backslide. We don't have to be dominated. We can wake up every day and receive the bread of life and live a holy and righteous life 
for the King of Kings without fear. Do you know that you can live a life pleasing to God, the one that created the heavens and the earth? It's not, not, it's not anything that we can do. It's not anything that we can say. It's everything that He's already done. For us. Yes. The life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. What was that faith? The faith of Jesus. The faith that took Him to the cross. We have that faith. We don't just have some, oh... My faith is so small and weak. No, if you're, if you're trusted in the finished work of Christ, you have the faith of the Son of God. Amen. Now that can get you through any trial. That's right. Amen. Now you might slip and fall and, and, and look over there for a second, but if you keep your faith anchored in Christ, you have that faith that He had, and you can get through any situation. Amen. Amen. And oh, there's going to be some situations. Praise the Lord for the situations. They bring us closer to Him. Yeah. Uh, we're, God, you know, all that being said, we can truly live for Him, but we have to understand how to. Not, when you first get saved, you don't understand everything about justification. You don't understand everything about sanctification. How many of you know that's why we got this right here? That's why we got the Word of God. But if you try to just read the Word of God by itself out of its righteous context, Paul said the letter of the law will kill you. Mm -hmm. If you're reading the Bible out of the context it was written, there's going to be some harm done in your life. Amen? Amen. A lot of people talk about how they, can't, they just can't understand the Bible. <clears throat> They've been struggling for years to understand it. I was there. I couldn't understand the Bible. And I'm not talking about the vows and these. I'm talking about the meat in the Word. I couldn't understand it. It's because I didn't understand God's righteousness. It's because I didn't understand the cross. Every word in this book is written in the context of what Jesus Christ did at Calvary. Who He is and what He did. And I'm going to show you that tonight. The Bible says, John 5, 39, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, and you don't have to turn there because we're going to be turning some other places. Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, and, and, and He said, You search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have life. Now these were people that knew the Scriptures. They could probably quote over half the Old Testament. These guys were pretty serious. And Jesus said, You search all those Scriptures because you think that gives you life. But the Scriptures, they testify about me. Now that's what Jesus said. That's what the Son of God said. Every single Scripture, line upon line, precept upon precept, every passage in the Old Testament, every doctrine in the New Testament, every epistle, every gospel is about not only who Jesus is, the Son of God, but how He's the Son of God to us. We know that Jesus is the Son of God, but just knowing that won't save you. You've got to know why. How was He the Son of God to us? Anybody know where that relationship was established? At the cross. Amen? We've got to know. You can't separate Jesus from His work. You can't separate the Lord from His work. Every single... Because we've seen tonight, every single thing God speaks is about that work. Amen. And you know, like I said, that just can't be denied. If you're hearing, if you think you're hearing from God, but it's not tying into what Jesus did on Calvary, you're listening to another voice. Amen. And I'm not preaching down to you tonight because I've been guilty of the very same thing. It's, you've got to be very care, careful in this life. <clears throat> you've got to be very watchful and you've got to guard your heart because... There are many preachers that are perverting the gospel and they just don't even know it. They're just ignorant. Or maybe they do know it. But most of them don't. And it's so easy for us to get in a place and pervert the gospel ourselves because we don't have the proper understanding. But praise God, we do. We do now. Amen? Amen. Jesus said that all the scriptures are about me. Luke 24, 47 uh, Jesus was talking to the disciples and, and uh, eating with them. And He said, now picture this. God's Son, the Messiah, the promised King of Israel, is sitting down with you and eating. And He says, 
I'm about to open up your understanding of the Scriptures. Yeah. Now, what would you do right then? Let's get it. I'd probably pull out the notepad. <laughs> I'd probably uh, uh, FaceTime my mama. Uh, I'd probably uh, uh, video it, record it for later. Because this is about to be important. This is how they're going to live from now on. How they would understand the Holy Word of God. And what did Jesus say? Is it? Oh, can you go to verse 46 if you don't mind? And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. So Jesus said, I'm about to open up your understanding to the Scriptures. And then what did he say? I had to come and die for you and be raised the third day. So that's just more proof right there. How do we understand the Scriptures? We've got to look at them in the light and the context that Jesus had to come and die for us. Amen. Right? Amen. The Word of God can only be read, can only be produce growth because the Word, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. And the only way you can have proper faith, real legitimate faith, is if your faith is in the Word of God, yes, but in the righteous context that it was written. Can I get an amen? Amen. Do you believe that? If we truly believe that, we will receive our bread of life every day. We will be growing in Christ. Hallelujah. This, is, this isn't just fun and games. You know, this is a, this is a serious matter. Amen. Living for the Lord is a serious matter. You know, a lot of people take it lightly. They, they, they post a scripture on Facebook every now and then or whatever social media. But if you're not waking up every day, like I said before, and realizing, you know, oh, wretched man that I am. If you're trying to read your Bible and you can't understand it, it's because you're not reading it in the context of Christ and what He did at Calvary. And praise God that we know that. Praise God that we don't have to live another day not understanding what God has for us. God has so many things for us that we, don't even, we can't even fathom. And I'm not just talking about in heaven. I'm talking about on the earth today. Do you know your position in Christ? I like it what, how... One of our professors, Brother David Borg, says it. If we're seated in Christ in heavenly places on the right hand of the Father, which the Bible tells you you are, you know. If we're seated in Christ, you know, Christ, He's not being dominated by sin. So why, why are we? It's because we don't understand that position. Every All the benefits God has for us, if we knew... Mm, it wouldn't be t what, they wouldn't be t we, you know it's better than Waffle House and IHOP and the chocolate chip pancakes. Yes. What God has for you are real life benefits that, that can become present day realities. Yes. And I want that. Amen. Sometimes we I think we take advantage you know of everything God has for you. no sometimes about it we all have taken advantage me especially of what God really has for us if we truly knew and dove into this great truth which we are we should be God is going to start doing things in our lives and you know we we've heard that for so long but if your faith really is in the right source and anchored in in the gospel in the cross if it really is, you're going to begin to prosper today. If it's not, then put it in there right now. Don't wait till you get home. Don't wait till the altar call. Don't wait till something bad happens in your life. Do it today, and you'll begin to prosper. You'll begin to flourish. You'll begin to understand every benefit, every single thing God has for you. How many of you know He wants you to do that? That's right. He wants you to receive everything that He has for you. Right. He didn't just die so that you could just look at it and go, Wow, those are all oh, those benefits are unreal. God wants you to grab onto it tonight. Amen. If you've never done it before, do it tonight. Amen. Do it tonight. This isn't just a, a, a repetition of words, but the way that you do it is acknowledging that He is your Savior. He died for me. Every single aspect of your life, that is what you look to because that's where everything comes from. And I know I've said that quite a bit tonight and you've probably heard it quite a bit since you've been coming to this church, but it, when you truly... Let me tell you how important repetition is. I've been preaching since I was 12 years old. For, six, for, for four or five years, it was a bunch of head knowledge. 
I wasn't letting the gospel work in my heart. Now, I can tell you just as good as any old country Texas boy could about how the gospel worked. But was it truly working in my heart? No, not like it should have been. So for four, five, six years, God had to work on me and that had to keep being repeated and repeated until I finally applied it to my heart and stopped playing games with God. And I realized I'm nothing without you, Lord. What am I doing? Oh, wretched man that I am. I'm fleshly. I'm carnal. I'm sold under sin. But your spirit has came into me and can quicken me and quicken my mortal body. And that made me happy. And when I put my faith in my heart, not just my thoughts. When I put my faith in what Jesus did for me, all the bondages yes. begin to fall yes. off. Right. Everything in my yes. life yes. begin to fall yes. at the feet of Jesus. Because yes. everything is under His feet. And if you are abiding yes. in your Savior tonight, yes. every single problem you have, every single bondage that you have, every single thing that looks way too high for you to get over, it's under the feet of Jesus. And if you're in him, yes. guess what? It's under your feet too. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about us being little gods, but we serve a big God. Right. And if we're found in him, if we're placed in him because of what he did at Calvary, we march on. Amen. No matter what anybody says to us, no matter what anybody does to us, how that person did me, how my mama did me, how my son did me, we march on. Amen. Because when you live your life, Yes. And you live a life and you just want to please God and you just want to chase after Jesus with everything inside of you and you seek His righteousness first, mm -hmm. all that other mess, it ain't going to amount to nothing. That's right. Amen. But Jesus, yes. Jesus, Amen. you don't have to see Him to be able to believe Him. Amen. He works better than any tool in the world you can try to fix up your car with because sometimes we're broken down cars. Amen. 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 Most of the time, we're some broken down cars. But guess what? Jesus, we, we're, not, we're not here just to get our tires changed. We're being renovated completely. Amen? Amen? Jesus will work. He's better than anything in the world. He's better than that cigarette we keep on puffing on, that alcohol we keep on drinking on. Jesus said, put all that down. I'm all you need. The only reason anybody ever does something like that is... That's something that Jesus could be doing for them. Do you know that? Yeah. Do you know that every time you, you pick up a cigarette and you smoke a cigarette or you drink a beer or two, however many people do, do you know that that's something that you're, you're doing something that Jesus, you think isn't, Jesus isn't good enough to do for you? If you drink because you're sad, you're saying Jesus ain't good enough to make you happy. If you're drinking just for fun, just for a celebration, you're, say, you're saying your life isn't content in Christ. You have to do other things. And I didn't mean to, to talk about that tonight, but maybe some people are struggling with it. Maybe we're having some problems with it. But Jesus tonight can deliver you. Amen. Not next week. Not when you get so drunk that for, you forget where you are. Those days are in the past. Amen. Jesus can deliver you tonight from whatever you're struggling with. Maybe you're struggling with an attitude problem. Maybe you're, 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 you're struggling with being mad and anger. I heard an amen over there. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe you're just struggling with being sad and depressed and despondent. We've been there. You know, I'll be the first one to testify. I've let situations in my life just get me down in the dumps. <laughs> And then Jesus comes right along and says, you know, here I am. You know, When we do that, when we put stuff in our lives above God to the point where we don't even think about Him anymore, you know we're making His sacrifice in vain. Amen. We're making what He did for us at Calvary in vain. That's right. But we don't have to do that. That's the good news. Amen. A lot of people say it's normal to, to uh, be a Christian and be dominated by depression and fear and sadness and sin. That's not normal. But the good news is it can stop today or whenever you want it to. It's up to you. God's already done everything and given us everything at salvation that we are required to to have victory over anything. 
Not just one, two, three things, but He's already given you the means and the answer for victory over everything in your life. That's where it comes to us. That's where we come in. You've heard the, the saying, if you won't quit, God won't quit. Here's the thing, God's always faithful. It don't matter how far you run from Him, if you turn around, He's there with His grace. Amen. He's always faithful. It's us that lacks the faith at times, amen? But praise God, it, if we do keep that faith, all those things I just mentioned can be tossed out the window and we can live a life acceptable to God, amen? amen. I really chased a, a very long rabbit trail right there. But that's all right, because only through Jesus as the Lamb of God can the light of the Scriptures be revealed to us. Amen. We'll just jump right back on in. Like I said, Romans ten seventeen, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And we know that the Word of God has to be in the context of Christ. So if your faith has to be legitimate, the faith we've been talking about all night then you have to read this Word. Don't just pick it up and read a chapter a day. Apply it to Calvary and then apply it to your life. Amen? Amen. Could you turn with me to uh, uh, Galatians 2, 21. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. We're going to go through this part quickly, and I'm not going to uh, have y'all here all night. You know, I could preach all night, you know, how the Bible college students are. Uh, amen. It's my amen corner I brought with me. Drove, drove an hour and a half. It went by pretty quick, you know. I'm preaching myself up happy tonight. We're going to have to go to Taco Bell or something after this. <laughs> I know that make y'all look excited. Oh, never mind. I know where we're going to eat, but uh, praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 2. Verse 21, <clears throat> Paul's writing to a people who have accepted law, the Old Testament, trying to mix it with the new gospel. Mm -hmm. And he's really, he's really amazed. You know, Paul, um, if you think I'm being hard tonight or that Pastor Matt's ever hard on you, uh, Paul wrote to these people and called them stupid. Mm -hmm. In the Greek, oh foolish Galatians means, oh idiots. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm never going to call anybody an idiot behind the pulpit. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I'm not as conf I guess I'm just not as confident as Paul. No, I don't believe that the Lord in this day and age is telling anybody to, you know, that Paul wasn't being rude. He cared about them. He was very caring about what had happened to them. And, and you know, like the Lord is very caring about what happens to us. And we can find ourselves in a place at verse 21. Let's go ahead and read it. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. That's a verse we all know uh, very well. And if we're going to be honest with ourselves and with the Lord tonight, we've all been in a place where we frustrate the grace of God at time at a time in our Christian walk. Can I get an amen about amen. that? The word frustrate means to set aside or deny. Paul is saying in this verse that, as you can see, if righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Paul is saying that righteousness only comes by grace. That's what he's saying. Because if you frustrate the grace of God righteous, and righteousness comes by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. What does that tell us? That Christ died to give us righteousness through His grace. Amen. Everything we receive from God is through His grace. Yes. And, and when you really think about God's grace, you know, grace is, is probably the most popular word outside of Jesus and God in church. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be willing to, to bet that it was. If you Googled that when you got home, and I might do it later, grace is a, a very popular word in the church. But not too many people really understand grace. You know, grace is God freely giving us something. And we can say that all day long, but if we try to do something for God in return... You're defeating His grace, and He's going to take His grace back. Because you're denying the grace, and you're picking up law. But when we realize, and when we receive the grace of God, we also have access to His righteousness. And not only that, but we are made to be righteous. Now, you don't have to turn here, but I'm just going to read it real quick. Romans 5, 19 says, For as by one man's disobedience... Many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. It's talking about the obedience of Christ to die on the cross. 
Verse 20, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Verse 21 says that as sin has reigned unto death, we know that sin reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life yes. by Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 19 says, By one man's obedience shall many be made righteous. Are you righteous tonight? Yes. Amen. That's not a trick question. Are you saved tonight? Yes. Then you're righteous in God's eyes if your faith is in the obedience of Christ, which Philippians 2.8 says He was obedient unto death. So the obedience of Christ is Him dying for us. So Him dying for us and our faith in that made us righteous. Amen. You are legally declared righteous. You're not a sinner anymore. Don't go around saying, well, we're all sinners. No, we're, you're a saint of God. Amen. Amen. Yes, we mess up. And yes, we're fleshly at times, maybe most of the time. I, I, don't, I don't know anybody's personal life. But I know that we're not sinners that we're righteous in God's eyes. If you're Amen. under the blood, if you're cleansed by the blood, you're righteous to God. You know, that's just all over me tonight for some reason. The God that created everything, when He looks down and sees you, if your faith is in the right object, you're righteous to Him. Yes. Amen. The only righteous God, the only righteous King, there's no, He has no evil about Him. There's nothing wrong with Him. He, he's not flawed. He's perfect. And He looks down at you and He sees righteous. Oh, that should humble us tonight. Yes. Amen. How gracious is He? How, how, how much mercy does God have? I'll tell you, it, it's, it never runs out. It's Amen. unlimited. When God looks down at His children, He sees righteousness. Amen? Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Uh, one, uh, a little last section <clears throat> tonight before I, I finish up. I, we learned that uh, God only speaks in righteousness, right? We all believe that. Well, I want to talk about one last thing. God only works in truth. This is a very uh, sensitive subject, I guess you could call it. It's made very many people mad, this truth. Uh, but it's made very many people glad, too. It's made the devil real mad, but it's made me real glad. Amen. That's where I want to be. Psalms 33, 4. Don't have to turn there, because we'll, but you can turn to uh, uh, Psalms 138. One last place. Psalms 138, uh, verses 6 through 8. <clears throat> while I read Psalms 33, 4. Psalms 33, 4 says, For the word of the Lord is right, and all His works are done in truth. Wow. Wow. Now, when I first time I heard that, it just blew me away. Because you know what that means? That means all those things in our past that we called God working, but the truth wasn't being preached, and the truth wasn't being believed, it really wasn't God working. Now, take that and think about it tonight. And think about it in your lives. Everything that we've called God working, but Jesus wasn't being preached as the Savior, really wasn't God working. Amen. You know, God doesn't work in mysterious ways. Come on. I'm sorry to mess up that one-liner that everybody just loves to post on Facebook. On. God only works in one way, That's right. and it's in truth. Come on. That's right? right? That's good. God only works in truth. Jesus is that truth, John 14, 6. He's the way, He's the life, He's the truth. And He became that truth to us at Calvary. And our faith in that is the only way. There's not another way. That's what your Bible says. That's not what I say. That's not something I just came up with. That's what the Bible says. These are God's words, right? That's what the Bible says. He only works in truth. Romans 8, 2. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. That is the truth. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. How many are thankful that God only works in truth? Because if He worked any other way, we'd mess it up. That's right. And He wouldn't be a righteous God. And we know that He's a righteous God. Amen. I'm so glad that we serve a good God. Uh, Psalms 138, verses 6 through 8. I'll go ahead and read it. Though the Lord be high, He has respect unto the lowly. But the proud He knoweth afar off. 
Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You shall stretch forth your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. Verse 8 right here is what I want to look at. <clears throat> the Lord will perfect or complete, that's what that word means right there, that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the works of thy own hands. Now what is David saying here? This sounds a, 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 kind of strange when I first read it uh, the other night. The Lord dropped it in my spirit. <clears throat> the Lord will complete that which concerns me. Yeah. He will not forsake the works of His hands. Mm -hmm. what, it, what is that talking about? That's talking about the work that God started in every single one of you at salvation. No matter when you got saved, no matter how old you got saved, we all got saved, the same thing happened. Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God came to live in us. Jesus came to live in our heart. He baptized us into Christ, into His body. We were crucified with Him, buried, resurrected. Now we're ascended and seated in heavenly places with Him. Amen? Amen. And the work that He started then, that is being done now on this earth in our corruptible flesh, the work that He started then, ten years ago for me when I was eight, He's still doing it today. Amen. Amen. And it's up to you whether or not you allow Him to keep doing it for the rest of your life. Hallelujah. It's up to you and whether or not you keep your faith in the only way that He can work, the cross of Calvary, what Jesus did there. Amen. And Philippians 1.6 says, Be in confident of this very thing, oh praise the Lord, that He which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, let me tell you, let me, let me leave you with something tonight. <clears throat> when we received the Spirit of God upon salvation and He began to work in us, He was conforming us to the image of Christ. And we know that this is an ongoing work. And it's not going to be stopped as long as we keep our calling and make our calling an election sure. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, uh, 1 Peter 2.10, or 2 Peter 2.10, I'm sorry says that if we make our calling and election sure, we won't stumble. We won't fall. That's what the Bible literally says there. Now what does that mean? I looked that word up, fall and stumble in the Greek, and it literally, it, fall means to stumble. It means to fall down. So like I said at the very beginning of the message, if you keep your faith, because how were we elected? Where were we elected? When Jesus died for us. So if you keep your faith in what elected you, you're not going to stumble. Yes, you'll mess up. Yes, you'll sin. But you don't have to backslide away from God one bit. Yeah. You don't have to uh, live for God this month and a couple months, throw down the drain. You can live for Him the rest of your life. You can live a righteous and holy life with Him, for Him, without fear without trembling, without worry, without doubt. Just cast your cares upon Jesus. Amen. If you're making your calling and election sure, you don't have to fall by the wayside and fall to the thorns and to the bristles, but you can be planted on the rock, Jesus Christ. Amen. And you will flourish. You will grow like a tree if your faith is in Jesus and what He did. Amen.